Mayflower, Arkansas, and a graduate of Philander Smith College, uh, where she received a BA in English and Communications. She is a hard worker, she's an author. Uh, the next person that I'm going to present to you is Maria Hopkins. Give her a hand as she comes. Yeah, she, uh, she, she gave a little bit more. I told her she didn't have to give all that information. I <laughs> say Maria, that's fine. Good, good morning. Well, yeah, it's still morning. Good morning, everybody. How's everyone? Good morning. Yeah, it's good to be here. And when I came and then Kim Lockhart comes up behind me. So Kim was an intern while I was with Congressman Snyder's office. So it's good to see her. Good to see my colleague, my political colleague back in the day. Good to see you too. And good to be here with all of you all. Thank you to President Green for encouraging and inviting me all to come uh, and share just a few words with you guys. So, I really like to be informal and just talk straight with you guys. Is that all right? Yeah. So, let's just start this. This is Chapel, and you all are all, how many are actually students in the room? Okay, the faculty? How many faculty are? Okay, so most of the students. So, I want to start off by giving you guys just a little background. <coughs> So Maria Hill, back in the day, Hoskins now, I had a mom. And my mother had, had father too, right? Had to have mother and father to get here, right? But my mom was the one. Every time I turned around, my mom, no, Maria, you can't go. <laughs> my mom want to go to the bowling alley, the skating rink. Uh-uh, you can't go. I want to be in the band. Sure, go be in the band. <laughs> I want to run track. Great, run track. I want to be in the drama club. Sure. Can I go to the party? Nope. Can't go. <laughs> so that was my part. And you know what happens when we keep getting those no's. Don't we get upset? You all been through that, right? Gosh, my mama is mean. Oh, she mean. I can't go nowhere. Can't do nothing. Got to go to church every month. But y'all have to go to church. Man. Early when you know, I wouldn't go. To, when she did let me go somewhere, and I came in 10 minutes late, it was like, get up at get up uh, three hours early, wash the dishes, and be ready for Sunday school. So, you know, that's, that was the rule. But you know what? What I found, that background is what started the preparation. Yeah. So that was then. But now I look back and I say, boy, and I could tell her consistently, Mother, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being hard on me. I thought you were hard, but you really weren't being hard. You were showing love. You were keeping me in line. So, so God's plan one day. So that was my background. Got a chance to do a lot of things and she said, you know, actually uh, we came here from the military. Um, my father was in the military and we retired out of not Noster, Missouri. Anybody, anybody here? Got, we have a bunch of adults in here. Anybody military here? No military? Well, we were in the Air Force, our last stand, and there we go, military right here. So we're in not Noster, Missouri, uh, Mississauga. We came back here to Arkansas in 1973. I actually had a chance to go to school here, lived in Mayflower, came here to Little Rock, graduated from Hall High School. Any Hall High School grads in the room? Warrior. Hey, Warrior! Warrior. All right, Warrior. Graduated from Hall High School. So that was where a bunch of my nose during those days when I was talking about can't go, can't go, no, can't go, right? But, but what happened next? So we get out of school, come here and go to graduate. And then, through the background, I also learned over the years Opportunity. She used to say something to me all the time: "Is treat people the way you want them to treat them. Mm -hmm. Be respectful. Be kind to everyone." And you know, I took that to heart. I didn't have any. You know, I, I learned that growing up, and that was great. Because what I'm why I'm sharing this with you is because of what I want you to see is all these things along the way help lead me to where I am today. These values the morals that were still young, and even as we grow older, if we didn't have all of those values and morals we're taught, you can learn them. You can learn them within your environment. So you change your environment. If the environment, if the environment is not conducive to a healthy, being moral, integrity, you have to sometimes just change your environment where you are. If it's not for the good of you, sometimes you have to do things different as adults. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, 
going through that and taking all of this in, finally gets an opportunity. So I'll tell you the FBI story, and I'm not an agent. I'll get to that in a few minutes. I'm a professional supporter. So I'm working for Congressman Snyder at this point, enjoying the work I'm doing, loving it. Then Congressman Snyder decides, I want to retire. I was like, you kidding me. I'm, I'm, am I going to get my 10 years in? <laughs> I got, just got my 10 years in. He retired January the 3rd, 2011. So I just got my 10 years in as of December 31st. Wow. So I got the 10 years in, and he decides to retire. So I was like, I'm unemployed. What am I going to do next? And I prayed about it. I said, Lord, what do you do? And I asked myself, what do I want to do? I looked around, I want to, have, want to work for a fellow agency. I said, well, I had the Department of Justice was on my list, the agencies I worked with. So I said, you know, I'd love to go work for the FBI. I had no, no thought that this would happen. But people asked, what do you want to do? I'd like to go work for the FBI. So put a plug in your thought about setting a goal, being focused, and no matter what somebody else tells you that you can't do, or it might not work, or why do you want to do that? If that's what you want to do, still keep on the process. So right. just put a pen in that right there. So I said, yeah, I want to work for the FBI. And that's what I kept hearing all the time. Why do you want to go work for the FBI? I said, I think I'd like to do that. Then I heard others say, hmm, that would be nice, but you know, they're really, really hard to get in. I'm not, you know, I don't know how you would do that. I was like, okay, I hear you, but that's not going to change my focus. I'm going to keep working this and working it. So I apply. The application is long, tell you on that. But you know what? And I tell you how the devil can get in, in the mix of your, when you're really trying hard and you're getting focused, mm -hmm. know the devil's going to distract you from what you're trying to do. That, 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 that's a promise. That's a promise. The devil's going to try to distract you from what you got going on. So I'm applying for this FBI job. Uh, that I heard came was coming up, uh, maybe about 10 o'clock at night. I said, okay, everybody's in bed. My, my daughter, I have a special needs daughter, she's in bed, my husband's asleep. So I'm applying, and guess what happens? It's storming and raining outside. I get down to probably the last page that we've been working on this about an hour. The lights go out. <laughs> Man, lights out. So lights come up. I said, hopefully this is safe. Hopefully it didn't get rid of everything gone. Mm -hmm. Wiped out. Mm -hmm. So now it's late night. It's like, oh my, maybe 11.30 or so or 12. I'm like, I, do I really want to do this? Now, this is the last day to apply, also. Mm -hmm. I waited till the ninth hour. I waited late. So the other thing is, try to, try to act early. <laughs> don't, wait till, don't wait till the ninth hour. So this was it. It's either I'm going to apply now or it's over. I don't have an opportunity. So I. Started over again, got through the application at the last ninth of the hour, got, got it in, went to an, actually got called in for an interview a few months later, went to the interview, um, I was emailed back and said, I, quali I was qualified, but there was someone more qualified. Actually, it was a veteran. Mm -hmm. <laughs> BBI, more qualified. But the FBI has a thing, it's called background check, yes. okay? So you have to go through a background check, you have to go through a polygraph before you even get into, uh, you know, to go back for that second interview. Mm -hmm. So what does that say? What God has for you, he has for you. Right. Mm -hmm. The person in prior in front of me what was a veteran mm -hmm. who was offered the job conditionally, but before he even got to start, something came up in the background. They had to cancel him out. So they called me back in for another interview I walked out the door the next morning, the director called me and said, we want you to come work for us. Will you accept a conditional offer? So, um, so what I'm saying to you is that there are challenges in life. All the time there's a challenge. I encourage you all to, we all have challenges, but just keep fighting on through the challenge. I encourage you because of jobs, so to give you a little bit more about jobs like F the FBI, CIA, Secret Service, all of those jobs, there are some requirements. There's some basic requirements. Number one, 
For all of our jobs, you don't have to have a four-year degree, but most of those you do. Um, get your degree. If you can, if you don't, get a certification. One certification we do accept is the uh, evidence technician. So if you are going into an electronic technician and you have that certification, you can apply for our ET job, which is a, a wonderful job. <laughs> Most others, our entry-level positions, you really don't have to um, OST, Office Support Technician. You don't have to have a degree, but they're so competitive, keep on and get your degree, okay? Because you know, that's, they're, they're only hiring people of degree. Making good choices. Um, we all make bad decisions, right? We all can, we all do something that we wish we, we didn't do. I, I think that's everybody, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. What the FBI is not looking for, the perfect person, but they are looking that you don't use drugs. Mm -hmm. If there's any drug use, that knocks you out. Uh, if there's any drug use to sale of marijuana over the past 10 years, if you've used marijuana within the past 10 years of application, that will knock you out. If it's prior to 10 years, they will still look at you. So if you had some use, um, they will still look at you. The thing is that you tell the truth. Yes. That is it more so than anything. So if you, if you apply, and I hope you will apply, I'll tell you a little bit more if you miss how to apply, just be honest, tell the truth, because I guarantee they already know. <laughs> they, they already know. So let me give you a little example about um, the background process that I went through. So I apply, and they're running my background, and they have, have people calling me. Marie, are you applying for that? Did you apply for that? Job? Yes, well, they came by to see me. Well, you're not, you weren't even on my list of it. You, know, you weren't on my recommendation list. But, but what they do is this. So if I'm applying for a job, and you're my neighbor, they're going to talk to your neighbors. They're going to go back to your schools. They're going to go back to wherever you live. They're just going to ask me to find out if everybody's saying the same thing. So my neighbor and I, we just might not get along. You know, <laughs> my neighbor was like, well, she's parking too close to my driveway. She's walking on my grass. I don't like her. And I'm just throwing out an example. Yeah. But that neighbor cannot knock you out because they're talking to too many people. Mm -hmm. There, by the time they get finished, they've got a good perception of what is your character mm -hmm. and what's your integrity. If you're a person they want you to work for the FBI. Um, so that's what I would say is be honest, be truthful, be forthright, whether it feels good or not, then <coughs> that's what they want to hear. Remember, not looking for a perfect person. Uh, but looking for somebody of high integrity. We have positions open. We're looking for special agents. So how many are grad in graduating, graduating seniors in the room this year? Okay, we have one? Okay, good. So it doesn't matter. There's so many jobs. There's so many different various jobs. And we're all over the country, all of the United States. We have the GETS in 76 uh, countries. So if you want to work international, there's opportunity. If you want to be an intern, you got back here looking for internship opportunities. Do you? Okay. So we look for intern, minimum 3.0 GPA, and you can apply online. The application will come out about August. Uh, comes out to August through October, I believe. Uh, 3.0, at least a sophomore. You can apply for internship opportunities. We also have collegiate hiring. Uh, anybody that's graduating or just recently graduated can apply for a job with us. Uh, and it's kind of like the same thing as internship, but you're actually working. I mean, you're, you're not an intern. You're actually a ground-level employee. So that's just some. And I bought some flyers that Chapman Williams has. So you can feel free to get with her, and it gives you the information on where to go apply for FBI jobs. I encourage you to. Diversity. We... We need a better diverse workforce. I will not tell you a story. We do not have a, we have, we have, right now we have almost 14,000 agents. Out of the 14,000 agents, we have about 20% minority agents out of the 14,000 agents. We have 39,000 employees. Um, we have a higher percentage of professional support staff, but they, we're really seeking for agents, but we're seeking for all type of jobs, all types of jobs. 
and whether you are, don't think of it as that, well, I have to be in criminal justice. You have science, math, whatever your field is that you're graduating in, we have something for you. We have our own city, as, as I say. No matter what it is, that you, whether it's art, because who would think an FBI would look for an art major? Of course, we do art crimes. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, how many of you like to, you know, we've got swimmers in here, divers, people like animals, and all this kind of stuff. So, we have, we have animals. We have divers. If you like to swim, you might be on the dive team. If you know how to fly a plane, we have planes. Uh, so, really, it's open. Whatever your, whatever your degree is, whatever you're interested in, we probably have a job for you. Uh, let, let me just throw something out here. Anybody can think of something that you say, oh, no, of course they don't. Throw one out for me. Give me a, anybody give me a suggestion. What do you think that the FBI does not have? It's hairstyles. Hairstyles. <laughs> Girl, you found a that you went out there. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, I'll give you a true, uh, I'll give you a true scenario. Uh, last year, we actually had a young lady, a uh, black female last year from Little Rock, who went to Special Agent. Uh, training in Quantico. She got selected. She said she said Quantico, and her instructor, she had her hair red. Her instructor told her, "You got to go change your hair color. You got to do something with that hair. I'm gonna have to send you home." So in that case, who's the hairstylist? Who's that hairstylist, Regina, right there? In that case, she was looking for somebody that could style her hair at Quantico. So, <laughs> so maybe on that day, it would have been the great day to be there. I, I, you know, I can't think. You, you stop me on that. One. <laughs> but anybody else got a, anybody else have a, a idea you want to think and throw out there that maybe we don't have? Dancer. A dancer? Dancing. Dentist. Oh, no, we have doctors. We have many doctors. So if you're a doctor, uh, actually, I have a doctor that goes out on our SWAT calls. Every time SWAT goes out, the doctor goes out. Why, why would a doctor go out with SWAT? Who has that idea? Somebody might get hit. Somebody might get hit, exactly. So we hope that they don't. Most of the time they don't, but just in case we do. So we have lots, lots of doctors. So anyway, that's just a little bit about, uh, okay, okay. Um, that's just a little bit about some of the jobs that we have, how to apply for a job, what I would say to you as students here at Short Shorter College, and I think this I relate it back to teaching at Philander, is number one, and always, all the time, keep in your mind that whoever you're networking with might be that person that you have to go back to for job referral, mm -hmm. a reference. So I encourage my students all the time, they'll come to class, and I'm concerned, maybe more than nothing. Just, I'm here, and I have to remind them that you're paying your money, whether you're borrowing it or you're paying out of your pocket. Get the most out of school that you can get out of school. Amen. Is come to class like you want to be to class. Mm -hmm. You know, because what I'm just just this week, the young lady says, Hey, will you refer me for an internship? <laughs> no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. <laughs> I can't do it. Why? I said, because you don't act like you don't want to be here. You come to class unconcerned, have come to class. Now your grades not what they would be just if you come to class. So how can I refer you for a job if your attitude about school is what it is now? And that doesn't feel good as instructor. That doesn't feel good to me. I don't want to say that. But I want to say, hey, the majority, that's, that's one of very few. The majority of the students are, I'm happy to write a letter for, do whatever I can, because they're trying to make the way just like you're all trying to make your way. So I encourage you in your classes right here is do your best. You know, you never know what a teacher you're going to encounter, what other person, what other faculty, what other student that may be able to help you in what you're trying to do. But uh, hold that professionalism about yourself. Be proud of yourself. You know, we know your know, pride seeks before destruction. I'm not talking about that time, pride, pride. You know, I'm talking about the pride of just being happy. Thank God that we're here today and we have opportunity yes, to yes. do something better and do something for each other. So, uh, so, and I guess in closing, what I want to say is that I'm happy to be here today. And I hope that I've been able to encourage you in some light 
um, as you go forward in your education here. And to let you know, don't give up. Keep up the fight. Keep up your desires, what it is you want to do, because everything um, we pray to the master is obtainable uh, if we just work hard for it. If we don't get that thing exactly what we want, guess what? We're getting close to it. It may take a time. <coughs> took me a long time. I was 50. When I started working for the FBI, I was, I was 51. 51. Agents, there was a limit, 23 to 37. Uh, and when you hit your 37th birthday, it's too late to apply. But for professional support, it doesn't matter. Right? So I'm hired on at 51. I can work until I'm on pain. I can't work. I can't get there. Uh, and I won't be. I'm hit my 20, and I'll probably uh, do a little bit more teaching. But anyway, just keep up the struggle. Keep going, and things will work out if you give your best to the master. And then he will give his best to you. Amen. Amen.